Got another video for A-level chemistry multiple choice practice. So this is number five now in the AS chemistry playlist. I've got separate playlists for A-level physical and organic and organic chemistry if you want to check those out. Hope you liked the video. If you haven't already subscribed, why don't you consider subscribing to the channel? And as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try them first. Okay, so make a start. So two questions to ask here. Have we got different terminal atoms in the molecule? So the answer is no, because in the first one, it's all hydrogen around the outside, oxygen in B, chlorine in C, fluorine in D. So next question is, have we got any lone pairs on the central atom? And we have on the nitrogen, because nitrogen's in group five, which only making three bonds to those three chlorines. So there's a lone pair in NCl3 and that'll make the molecule polar. So the answer was C. Number two is just testing your knowledge of your ions. So silver ions, one plus charge, carbonate ions, CO3, two minus, and so therefore the ratio of ions is going to be Ag2CO3. So the answer was C. Number three, so the thing we need to remember is when ice forms, it forms an open lattice structure. Um, so the hydrogen bonds hold the water molecules apart in ice and that does lower the density because the mass is the same but the volume's greater due to that open lattice structure. So statement B is the answer. Number four, so the thing to remember here is that oxides, hydroxides and carbonates neutralize acids. So barium sulfate, none of those. So that is the answer. Number five, nice and easy. Aluminium's got a P1 configuration. So it's gonna have one unpaired electron. Number six, we're gonna to need to work out the oxidation numbers for the chlorine and oxygens in this equation. So I'll do that now. So now we've got the numbers in, we can see clearly that oxygen's oxidation number hasn't changed. It's stuck at minus two. So statements B, C and D are obviously wrong because they imply that it does change. So that only leaves A, which must be the right answer. And if you look at the oxidation numbers for chlorine, it does go up and down. So it has been oxidized and reduced. Number seven, so potassium ferrate six contains Fe in the plus six oxidation state. Um, so how many oxygens at minus two each do we need to give that overall two minus charge? And the answer is four. So the answer was B. Number eight, first thing we need to do is just balance the equation. And from that, you can see that we need four moles of nitric acid. So the answer was C. Number nine, first thing I need to say is that moles are proportional to volume of gas. So if we're reacting the same volumes of Cl2 and ClF3, they're reacting in a one-to-one -one ratio. So if we move on to this gaseous compound, there's six decimeters cubed being produced. So that's three times as many. So it's gonna have a three in front of its formula. And the other thing we need to factor in is that this has a 100% atom economy. So this is an addition reaction. There's only one product. So we've only got three chlorine atoms and three fluorine atoms to play with. So it must be CLF. Number 10, so the number of particles, and in this case, the particles and molecules is equal to the moles times Avogadro's number. So all we need to do is calculate the number of moles of each of these. And obviously the biggest number will be the answer. So the biggest number of moles was for B. So that's the answer. Number 11, so the formula we're going to use here is delta H for the reaction is equal to the sum of the bonds broken minus the sum of the bonds formed. So we'll just put the numbers in. So there's everything that we know and the unknown is the um, OH bond enthalpy. So I'm saying 4x for that. The 4 is because we're making 2 moles of H2O. Each H2O molecule has 2 moles of the OH bond. So all we need to do now is solve 4x. So that comes out at plus 464, so it was C. Number 12, so I'll start with temperature. So we need to look at the sign for the delta H. So that positive sign there is telling us that the forward reaction is endothermic. So we need a high temperature to favor that forward reaction. 
so we can get rid of A and B. And then for pressure, we need to look at how many moles of gas are on each side of the equilibrium. So we've got two on the left, four on the right. So we're going to need a low pressure. So it was option D. Number 13, to work out KC, we obviously need the expression. So there it is there. And all I'm going to do is replace the concentration terms with the numbers in the table. So that gives an answer of 0.054, option B. Number 14, so I've highlighted the main chain in the molecule. So you can see they've both got this main chain of six with a carbon-carbon double bond at the start of the chain. And then on the identical atoms on each molecule, you've got the same thing. So on carbon two, you've got a methyl group. On carbon four, you've got two methyl groups. And then on carbon five, you've got a methyl group. So these molecules are absolutely identical. So it's going to be option A. They have the same empirical formula. Number 15, the low reactivity of alkanes is attributed to the non-polar bonds in the molecule and the relatively high bond enthalpies of the CC bond and the CH bonds. So the one that closely matches that is C, high CC bond enthalpy. Number 16 is testing your knowledge of your organic conversions. So this one's going from an alcohol to a haloalkane. And to do that, you need a sodium halide and sulfuric acid. So it's going to be option C. Number 17, which of these compounds can do both of these reactions? So we'll deal with the first bullet point. So acidified potassium dichromate oxidizes primary and secondary alcohols. Also aldehydes, but we haven't got aldehydes here, so I've just put that in a bracket. So you'll notice I've already written up what type of alcohol group we've got. We've got a tertiary alcohol at C, so this one can't react with the first bullet point. And then for the second one, this elimination reaction is the elimination of water from the alcohol. So obviously you need the OH group to come off, but you also need that to be a hydrogen on an adjacent carbon atom. And the only one that's got that is A, so that's the answer. Number 18, I always do percentage yield um, using the moles method, so that's the way I'm going to do this one. So the moles of 2 bromobutane being used is 0.177. If we look at the ratio, we should be able to make the same number of moles of product. So now for the actual moles of product, it's coming out at 0.065. So the percentage yield is the actual over the theoretical moles times 100, which comes out at 36.7%. So the answer was C. Number 19. So a nucleophile is defined as an electron pair donor. So that rules out C and D. And there's just a generic part of a mechanism involving a nucleophile. And you can see the electron pair is being donated, in this case, to an electron deficient carbon. So obviously that's got low electron density, so it was option B. And finally, number 20, so a fragment peak at M over Z29 due to a C2H5 plus fragment. So that rules out A and B because they can't produce that fragment. And then to work out which one it was, I worked out the molecular formula and then the MR. And obviously you can see 102 for C. So that must have been the molecular ion peak in the mass spectrum. So C is the answer.